Okay, I'm gonna squeeze. Guys, I just got set up in my cave. I got my sleeping pad down. I got my my uh, quilt out. Got my pillow blown up. I'm sitting here having some some dinner right now. But I just got the most awesome text. Tar down, baby. The <laughs> Lake Fort guy got it done. I am so pumped that Justin was able to get him a tar. I had a great evening here. I had a bull at 130 yards. You know, if I was rifle hunting, I would have got it done tonight. But I'm sticking it out with my bow. This basin I'm in, we've had animals in every morning, every evening. I'm really liking my chances if I just stick it out here. If you look over there, that's the wet part of the cave. It's a little uh, soggy, but got my sleeping pad, my uh, quilt. I got my puffy pants on to keep me warm. Got my bow here. I think we're good to go. I think we're good for the night. Should be a good night's sleep. Good morning from the tent, everybody. It was uh, about freezing temperatures last night. I think the, the inReach said it was 33 degrees. And we've had some moisture move in. It's dewy, and uh, the tent's just covering water right now. And I had to break out my puffy pants and jacket uh, just to be able to sleep. It was really cold. I was just sleeping fully clothed and then my feet, my feet kept getting cold down there at the end, not on flat ground by any means. So there was kind of a, a posturepedic situation, big hump in the middle. But the exciting thing is, uh, you know, we got a tar down. That was part of the reason I couldn't sleep. The other part was the cold, but uh, now it's time to eat a little breakfast. I barely have any water left. The plan is to, uh, to glass around here this morning. We're going to see if we can see any more tar or chamois and uh, see if we can get Todd uh, on camera getting one. And then uh, if we don't see anything around here, we're going to go track the tar that I shot yesterday. Don't really know how big it is, just know it's a mature animal, so it's going to be pretty exciting. Hopefully we won't get rain on too much today and uh, everybody else is going to have an opportunity to get an animal. You know, still got my buddy JT, he slept in a cave last night. Trying to figure out what to do. Um, you know, weather has killed us this trip. We've gotten to hunt two days. Two days out of coming over here for 11. So I just got the text from Wendy from the ranger there at the, at the uh, hut that it's supposed to be heavy rain all day today. I'm gonna pack my stuff up and just slowly work my way down the mountain, get back to the little, to the hut. This basically puts an end to my tar and chamois hunt. It's disappointing, but I'll tell you what, I got to see some amazing animals. I got to see some amazing country and it's some of the steepest, most nastiest mountains I've ever climbed. And you know, plus I got to spend the night in this cool cave. Let's see what we got going on. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's snowing. It's amazing how the conditions out here just change within hours. So, lucky enough to get a shot off last night. It was absolutely beautiful. The most gorgeous sunset I've ever seen. Now we're going to have more work. Our tar is way up there. And there's even more around us right now. So, see what the weather brings. Let's see what New Zealand gives us here on the southern island. Doing it the Kiwi way. Tramping through the bush. That is snow. Definitely snow. <laughs> oh, welcome to New Zealand. Thank you. 
Big chunks coming down now. Since it's snowing now, we're gonna go ahead and try to recover this original tar that I shot last evening. These are big, big chunks. Being from Texas, I never see this. Oh yeah, oh my gosh. All the way up there. But he's all the way on top. At this point, we're basically just walking through trees. Just grabbing onto them, walking through them. Oh, it's like wrestling a bear. Tar down. We might have double hit it up there. Maybe. Yet to see one below us. By the time I saw it, he was already getting the rifle out. Oh, he's moving a little bit. See some blood. So we might have two tar up there in the same area. We're about to find out. But we've probably gone another 800 feet above our tent already. The snow is getting heavy. This is crazy. There he is. Coming up on the one that was just shot. Bull tar. So we're not sure if this is the same one or not, because it's in the same area. It might have gotten up during the night. <sighs> Whistling at us. Very nice tar. Bull tar. He was facing this way, so if I hit him where I thought, he should have a shoulder wound. That's where I shot him. I shot him right there, and he... Because it was like quartering. That's where exactly where I told you to shoot. It yeah, kind of but it should have went into some lung from there, huh? The exit wound should be like back there towards your right hand. Mm -hmm. Well, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we double tapped him. <laughs> <laughs> Looking up at us, and we could only see his head, so maybe he was just bedded where he was. Like, maybe. Not standing. <laughs> <laughs> what a place to take a photo. Yeah. Between it's yesterday and now. This is it. This is my bull tar for the trip right here. So special. The, the work that it took to get up here, not helicopter hunting, doing it the Kiwi way, right, Todd? You betcha. Hiking all the way up here. This, this makes this my biggest trophy animal ever. The actual trophy, plus it's just a personal trophy for me personally getting to hunt up here with one of my best friends, JT and Todd, and just getting to hang out with those guys and experiencing New Zealand up here in the mountains and being able to take a nice bull tar. It's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So. So blessed to, to get this animal. I made a, a good shot on it, shot it in the shoulder while it was quartering, but uh, it survived the night, rolled down the hill, and it bedded up right here. So we thought it was a different tar, but it was just bedded up and it wasn't going anywhere. Todd was saying it was just standing there for a long time. It wasn't acting right. So he thought it might be the same one. Turns out it is. We found the hole right there above the shoulder. So tough, tough animal. So much respect for this, this animal. And we're gonna cape it. We're gonna take some uh, some meat off this guy and, and pack it back down the mountain a long, long way. So 
truly blessed. Todd, give me one last fist bump, man. So awesome. Now we got to get to work, to work on this guy, but just truly a trophy, y'all. Truly a trophy. All these conditions are absolutely terrible. It's snowing, our hands are freezing. Oh God, I might die. <laughs> I might die. Our tents are way the hell down there. Oh, I think I've probably got 80 pounds on my back right now. So our plan to stay up here and hunt has been thwarted. The rain is just, it's getting bad. The thing we gotta worry about is going back down those creeks, getting so high that we can't cross and then we're really stuck up here. So um, just communicated with JT. I think he's gonna do the same thing. I'm not sure if he's got anything or not. But just coming down that last part of the mountain with the goat head and skin and the meat in my backpack, I don't know how much it weighs, but it is, it's the hardest thing I've ever done, just going from that distance. So we're talking about probably six hour hike or so, trying to get down there before dark. Um, it's probably 10 or 11 right now. I know this thing is foggy, but it's raining, it's it's not gonna get any better. Y'all, it's just, this is the hardest thing I've ever done. The conditions are harsh. The physical toughness is so harsh, like nothing I've ever done could compare, prepare me for this. So, it's gonna be a long hike down the mountain. Wish me luck, I've already said a few prayers just to get down, it's that bad. So, we'll get down, then we'll share some stories. But this is freaking hard. We've made it down from 4,500 feet. We went through the jungle. My legs are about to give out. The river's rising. The rain is just pouring in now. We gotta get moving. I've never been this tired in my life. One step after the other. I'm also out of water. I'm trying to drink water. This water's like green now. God. Oh my god, this is the hardest thing I've ever done. We gotta get back to camp. It's really pouring now. This is absurd. What? That's it, man. It's okay, on the home stretch. Yeah, it's a thing. We can don't have to take risks now. Feet of wet, we can get in the water, you know? Yep. Get those coals burning. I'm gonna get over that side. Okay, I'll let you lead. Oh my god.
Get your pack off. Okay. Yeah. See something good, Toddy? tired besides dealing with Willis my brain tumor that uphill battle that still continues that was the hardest thing I've ever done physically and mentally when we first came down that mountain and I had uh, the skull and the cape the meat and my pack was you know 85 pounds plus and we went down, it took us two hours just to get back to our campsite. It was only 500 feet down or 500 yards down. I realized this was gonna be a grueling, grueling day. The conditions were so bad, I could barely break out my camera. I was just, I just had my GoPro on, the batteries kept dying, it was so cold. It was nearly freezing temperatures, yet I was sweating, steam was coming off being taught. The forest that we had to go through on the way up, it was, it was tough to begin with, literally climbing up roots. So going back down and having to just turn around and literally slide and crawl and just be in the mud, just getting poured on, sideways rain, lightning, and going down with that much weight and that slippery conditions where every step you could twist an ankle, you could fall, and in fact, we did fall many, many times, and thankfully did not break anything. It took us about four hours to make it down to the main waterfall where we had tracked that path up. And when we got there, my, my legs were done. I, I could not, I had no physical balance. All I could do was just put one foot in front of the other, and I was not able to, you know, position my feet around the, the rocks that I needed to, to push off good. And I, I fell, I fell into the river and all my stuff ended up getting soaked. And that's why I'm filming this right now is because all of my camera gear, I thought it was dead. I, I just wrote it off. I said, it's, it's done. It was just in my pack. I looked up and Todd just gave me the thumbs up. Like, come on, man, come on, we gotta do it. And I got up and we kept going down this river. And I don't know how, I, I prayed so many times. I, pr I bet you I prayed a dozen times, like, please Lord, get me through this. Please Lord, get me through this little spot. Please Lord, get me through this spot. And then just literally watching Todd, the toughest guy I've ever met, no question. He is a true Kiwi, Southern Island, tougher, than anybody I've ever been around. Just watching him trek through, and he was carrying my sleeping bag and my tent on his back as well, pacing through there, just watching Todd get up after falling and, and crawling through stuff and keep going. It brought out that like competitive, you know, team side of me where I'm like, all right, 
you know, he's doing it, I can do it too. I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep going. The craziest story that isn't on camera, after it got dark, you know, after six, seven hours of hiking down this mountain, we had already crossed a couple rivers, we're soaked, we're wet, you know, our feet, our boots are filled with water and we're thinking we can get back to the main cabin, we're gonna have a coal fire, we can get warm, and then we hit this creek that is impassable. The water is raging down it. Todd walks out to his knees, nearly gets swept away, and then turns around. And it was just, it was so disappointing. Like physically, I was done. Mentally, I was not done yet. But I was thinking we're on the home stretch. It's like one more mile. We can do this. We can do this. We're gonna get wet, but we can just keep trudging. And at that point, if you've ever ran like a long distance, it's literally just like, just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. You're mentally just in a zone. Then I had to break out my puffy jacket, my other clothes, and just walk around and try to stay warm. After 30 minutes, me and Todd were talking. Uh, we were probably gonna have to sleep there that night. So we were about to break out the tents and really put on the heavy gear. And it was just, it was rough because we knew we were only like a mile away and we were stuck there. But each time we walked back and forth and tried to get our, you know, our limber up, just keep moving, stay warm. Todd was checking the river with my trekking pole, checking it, checking it. And it was going down an inch every 10 minutes or so. We waited until that spot dropped about eight inches and it still was really sketchy. But the rain started picking up again and we knew it was gonna rise and Todd just got out there and he found a hole that was high that we could jump into. And literally he jumped. I'm watching this guy in the dark with my headlamp. He jumped into a raging river and he landed on the other side, grabbed a tree and he just said, come on mate, give me your hand, jump as hard as you can. And y'all, it was a leap of faith I jumped, I grabbed Todd's hand, he pulled me in, and at that point, I knew we were going to make it back. It was the closest I've ever come to like actually being in a life or death situation. I had no battery, I had no cameras to film all of it, but I'm just telling you the story now, and I was, that didn't even matter to me at the moment anyways. I was just thankful to be back here, know that I was back with friends, we were gonna get warm, and we were gonna survive the night just fine. Oh. Tough, so oh my God. Mm. I just read your message. Oh. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Come here and fill this pack. <laughs> Dude. I'm alive. Thanks to Todd. Did you survive? Oh, I survived. <laughs> I pick that sucker up or try. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah. Oh. Oh, my gosh, dude. Everything. Everything's wet. Dude, cameras away. I'm just glad y'all got back in. I should have died a couple times. <laughs> oh, dead serious, bro. Todd got me through. Yeah, dude. Todd's a tough son of a gun. He's the toughest <laughs> human being I've ever met. <laughs> I told oh, you that gosh. before we came. Oh my gosh, dude. We were about to camp out there by the river, and he just, he waited 30 minutes and he checked it with my pole and he said, "Let's do it." <laughs> I literally had to jump across and grab him and he pulled me. I bet you that pack's close to 90. Yeah, it's heavy, for sure. Hey, you're we back. Let's let's get dry. We made it, dude. All right, buddy. Well, we got two fires going to dry your stuff out. All right, man. I'm just glad to see you. Glad to see everybody. Be alive. Yeah. I had some questionable moments. <laughs> no doubt, I had some questionable moments. I carried a bull trophy tar down the treacherous terrain I could ever imagine from 4,500 feet down to 1600 at base camp with the skull, the meat, the cape. And now we just have to uh, do a little bit more caping on the face and carry it back down seven miles back down to the car. I'll have about the same weight with all the rest of my gear in there and it's gonna be grueling as well. My boots are sopping wet. My gear is not fully dried out, but the hard part is over now, guys. The, the, ra the rain has just been terrible. It's picking up again. And if we don't head out now, we're gonna be stuck in here for days and we won't make our flights back. I had a slim opportunity at that tar. He came through at the right time. Even with that good shot, he did die. Luckily, he laid in the same spot all night and we finished him off, but 
This is the craziest, most grueling thing I've ever done. I have to thank Todd for just giving me the encouragement to get through last night and get here a true tough Kiwi. This has been a growing experience. Sheep hunting, mountain goat hunting is incredibly tough. Mad respect to anybody that does it. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this series of getting up here, the hunting aspect, the recovery, and coming back down the mountain. Please hit that like button, share it if you think it's shareable, and I'll see you on the next episode where we're gonna do a little cooking, some more caping, and getting back down the mountain. Love you guys. I'm glad to be back here safe and sound.